Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Hold on, adoration be given unto our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, praise be the Lord. Praise be to the Lord. Praise be to the Lord. Praise be to the Lord. Ramba huriba sinkala vasia. Praise, praise be to the Lord God Almighty. The Lord is good, is good, is good, and His mercy endure it forever. And His mercies endure it forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, honor, and adoration be given unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to thank the Lord today for making us see today. It's a day the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Today is a beautiful day. It is the last Sunday of the month of April 2021. The Lord has made us see from the beginning to witness from the beginning of the year 2021 and has brought us to this day. He that has made us see today shall is more than able to keep us to the end of the year. Amen. Hallelujah. I welcome you all. If you are still on the way, I welcome you all to my platform, my ministry platform. Jesus Christ is my message, prophetic ministry. As you all know, my name is Esther, Evangelist Esther Olaika Dia. Amen. Evangelist Esther Olaika Dia. I welcome you to my platform. I welcome you to my platform. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. As you come in, as you join me, please share, share, share. Please share, share, share as you join me. Please share, share, share the program. Share the broadcast. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, today, before we go ahead, let us say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and our God, we praise your name, we adore you, we lift you high, we magnify your name, O oh God, there is none like you in all the earth, you are the Alpha and the Omega, you are the mighty man of war, the great man in battle, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Lily of the Valley, Ancient of Days. You are the Rose of Sharon, the Bright and Morning Star. You are the Beauty. The Lily of the Valley. Oh, we worship you, Father. You are the Root of Jesse. Father, Lord, there is none like you. You seated in the heavens and make the earth your footstool, Father. You preside over all, O oh God. You are the creator of all, but nobody created you. You created yourself. Father, there is none like you. You made it possible for us to see today. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. In the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God, we have come again today to hear your word from your throne of grace and mercy. Lord, we kneel at your feet, O oh God, to hear from you. I bow before thee, O God. I humble myself before thee, Father. I pray that you use me, O Lord, as your clay and mold me in the form you wish me to be. Father, Lord, I commit myself into your hands. I decree so that you may increase in me. Jehovah, King of glory, I surrender all, Father. Speak your words through me, O Lord. Use my tongue to pronounce your heart, to say your word, O God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that the focus shall not be upon me. It shall be on you alone in Jesus' name. I pray that all hearers of the word, including myself, we shall not be hearers of the word alone. We shall be doers as well in the name of Jesus. I pray that the word shall change lives for good. And only you shall take all the glory at the end in Jesus' mighty name. As people have joined this platform, I pray that they will not live here the same way that they have joined in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that because they have joined, that you shall do a new thing, a miracle in their life this week. They shall walk into a mighty miracle, a manifestation of your glory and power 
upon their lives. Great door of breakthrough that they have been knocking on for their, in their lives. It shall open unto them this week in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you manifest your power and your glory in this place today in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, because you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Like I mentioned before, I said we're going to be talking about the final part of the truth. The final part of the truth. I'm going to do a little bit of a little bit of recap regarding the truth that I've been sharing about. Amen. I'm going to be doing a little recap about the truth that I'll be sharing about. The first one, the first one of this series is a three-part series. Today is the last and final part. The first part was titled, The Truth. Do you know the truth? Amen. And the second part is, do you seek for the truth? Do you allow the truth to prevail? Amen. And now today, we're going to be talking on the final part titled, The Destruction of Lies. The Destruction of Lies. What lies can do. What it means to go for lies rather than for the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to be talking about lies. Or what it is to go for the lie rather than the truth. A little recap again. We say that the truth has an habit. I'm, I'm recapping what we have said regarding the truth before, prior to today. The truth has an habit. The truth is a living being. The truth never dies. We talked about the truth is a spirit. Amen. And we talked about the truth is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is the spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead. There can be only one truth. That's what the word of God says. There can be only one truth. Amen. So the truth is only one in all the universe, in all the world. There can never be two truths. And that is why it is one and only and it is a spirit and is a living being. The truth gives birth to the fear of God. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The truth is God's commandment. Hallelujah. The truth is the word of God. And we, con we, we, we also concluded that the truth, this same truth we're talking about, is Jesus Christ. Amen? And it is very expedient to walk in the truth. Now let's talk about supposing we decide to walk in lies. We talked about the good things of walking in the truth. The blessings of walking in the truth. We talked about so many things about the truth, about the blessings of walking the truth, how Joseph walked in the truth in spite of all the persecutions he went through. He stood by the truth and he was exonerated, he was elevated, he was crowned, he became the ruler, he came from the pits to the, to, 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 to the, uh, um, to the ruling chair, hallelujah, he came from grass to grace, he came from nothing to everything. It became an important personality. It became a ruler. All the truth prevailed in everything that he did. We talked about the truth. How people lived the truth. How people manifested the truth. Hallelujah. How it is good to walk in the truth. How Daniel walked in the truth. How Daniel stayed with the truth. How we did not deviate from the truth and eventually how we excelled and exonerated, was exonerated. Today we are going to talk about walking in lies. Supposing you choose to walk in lie, you reject the truth and you decide that you want to stay with the lie. You decide that you choose to walk in lie, to dwell in the lie. What are the repercussions? The Bible says in the book of John 1.14, he says that the word became a human being, hallelujah, 
and lived here with us, we saw his true glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. From him, all the kindness and all the truth of God have come down to us. So we already know that Jesus Christ is the truth. And if you walk in lie, that means you are rejecting Jesus. That means you have turned your back on Jesus. That means you have chosen to walk in the opposite direction. That means you have chosen the path of death rather than life. Because we spoke about the truth being alive. Being, being, being alive. That it has a heartbeat. Hallelujah. That is the truth. The truth cannot die. It endure it forever. As you can see, you can find that in the book of Psalm 117, verse 2. The truth endure it forever. So if you chose to walk in lie, that means you're walking against Christ. You're walking against the light. You're walking against what Christ stands for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of God says, the word of God says, is it possible to distort the truth? By misinterpreting the truth? Yes. You can distort the truth by misinterpreting the truth. Hallelujah. The book of John, the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 52 says, Woe to you, lawyers, because you have taken away the key to knowledge, scriptural truth. You yourself did not enter, and you held back those who were entering by your flawed interpretation of God's word and your man-made tradition. Today we can see the whole world being pervaded by lies. Even the lies come as, as permeated even the church of God, even the house of God. You, they live lies from the pulpit. Right from the pulpit, they live the life of lies from the pastors from the, the the prophets because all they're after is flesh gratification they are not after the spirit of god people are no longer worshiping god in spirit and in truth because they know that lies will give them a a a, a, a quick gratification gratification immediately now 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 they want a now 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 blessing they are not standing in the presence of God. They are not waiting on God. Hallelujah. They, are, they do not have anything like long suffering that Christ told us to endure. So that we can see the glory of him when he emerges. Hallelujah. So we find that, that lies have permeated the society. Everybody chose to live in lies. That is why there is so much darkness in the world. But the Bible says that we are the light of the world. We, should, we as believers should walk in light and walk in truth. Because the truth is the light. Hallelujah. So what is a lie? Let's, we're going to see the examples of some lives of some of some people that chose lies over truth. They chose to walk in lies over truth. They chose to live in the, in the lie of the devil. They chose to reject God. They chose to reject what Christ has come to do for us. They chose to stand in lie just because they want to escape the immediate judgment that may befall them if they stand for the truth. Let me tell you, it is better to stand for the truth and go through immediate punishment, if it warrants a punishment, than to stand for lie that will give you eternal damnation, eternal darkness. Hallelujah. Because the, 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 the truth that you have rejected and opted for the lie, that truth is still alive. It's still asking to come out and it will continue to ask. It can never die. So when you walk in lies, you are just, it's, 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 it's just a, a number of time. It's a manner of time. It's just a manner of time, days, maybe weeks, months. It could be years. One day, the truth will catch up with it. And the shame, that, and then there comes a greater shame. Hallelujah. Let us look at the life of King Saul. We all, all know that King Saul was the first king of the of Israel when the Israelites they decided that they want to have a king like all other nations around them they approached Samuel and told Samuel give us a king we want a king to rule over us and Samuel received the Lord 
that these people are troubling me. What should I do? God told him, give them the king, hacking onto their request. And Samuel, prayerfully led by the Lord, picked Saul. And Saul became the first king of Israel. But what did Saul do? Let us all quickly run to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Please turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15. Now I'm going to be reading the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15. And I'll be skipping some parts if necessary so that we can quickly go through this. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 15. I start from verse 1. It says, Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken down unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he had wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. So God spoke to Samuel to go tell Saul that he is, it is time for him to avenge the Israelites. Amalekites were part of the people that will lay the Israelites when God was bringing them out of the land of Egypt. When God was bringing them out of the land of bondage. When God was bringing them out of slavery. When God rose up to fight for his people. Amalekite was part of one of the nations that stood against them on the way. And they troubled the Israelites then. And the Israelites did conquer them. But because they had troubled Israel, God at his appointed time, remember that our God is a God of vengeance. No matter what the enemy has done for you, one day he will arise for your sake. God has not forgotten. He will arise and he will avenge for you at his own time, not your own time. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. And God, and God said to Samuel, go and tell the uh, go, go and tell Saul to gather the people they are going to war against the Amalek and he said, thus said the Lord of hosts remember I'm reading now verse 3 now go and smite this is Saul, this is um, Samuel talk, saying this to Saul about what God said, now go and smite Amalek and utterly, utterly take note of that word utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not but slay both man and woman infant and suckling ox and sheep camel and ass God told Samuel to tell Saul to do this this was an express instruction to Saul the king of Israel about exactly what God wants him to do but let's go further let's jump to verse 7 and what did Saul do in verse 7 of the same chapter, chapter 15. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Avila until thou comest to shore that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. He took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. And, and verse 9 says, But Saul and the people speared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not, he would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile, and refused that they destroy utterly. So, God told Saul to go to Amalek and destroy everything, including their king, and everything, everything, everything should be destroyed, totally destroyed in Amalek. But what did Saul do? When he got there, he did not, he destroyed things, the people, but he spared Agag, the king. And then he began to gather all the spoil, all the fat rams, and the, the, the cows and the sheep and all the lovely things fattling things all the golden things he began to gather them he didn't destroy them all contrary to what God said he should do so <coughs> he went against the word of the Lord 
he did not go exactly as God has asked him to do. He did not follow the instruction of what God asked him to do. So this is what Saul did. And then, in verse 10, he read, Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me, and had not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night, and it be grieved Samuel because the Lord was telling Samuel that Saul has grieved my heart. Saul has disobeyed me. Saul did not do exactly what I told him to do. And it hurt Samuel. And what happened? Let's jump to, the, to verse 15. And Saul said, When Samuel said, Why have you done this? Saul said, They have brought all these people from the Amalekites, for the people spare the best of the sheep and of oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. So he lied here. He said that he has kept all the sheep, all the rams, all the fatlings, all the uh, 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 wealth, wealthy stuff that he spared it to be able to use them for sacrifice to thank God for winning the battle, to, to sacrifice unto God, unto his God. Can you see the way a manner that Saul said to sacrifice unto thy Lord? He could not even acknowledge that God was his own God. He didn't say that I want to use it to sacrifice unto my God. He didn't say that he said to sacrifice unto thy God, unto Samuel's God trying to impress Samuel with a lying tongue. Can you see the lying tongue? The distortion of the truth. Distortion of the truth. He, he knows that God is all saying. God saw what he did. But he still decided to lie. Who is he lying to? He still decided to neglect the truth. And decided to speak out lies from his mouth. You see, lies dig bigger graves for people they don't know. If your grave was dug a little bit, when you tell lies, you dig it more deeper for yourself. Lies destroys. The fruit of lies is eternal damnation. And as he told these lies, let's go further. I am going to jump very quickly to verse 18. It says here, and the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go, this is Saul reprimanding, this is somewhere reprimanding Saul. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore they didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of the Lord. God told you to destroy everything, but you decided to do your own will, not God's will, on an errand that God sent to you. And on top of it, you are lying. Because Saul said to Samuel here, in verse 20, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and I have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and I have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But that's a lie. He did not utterly destroy the Amalekites. Because he left the king Agag alive. And also he brought all the living things that are fat, the animals, the fatness and the goodies in Amalek. He brought it to Israel. That was contaminating, contamination of the land of Israel. That was contaminating the land of Israel. God is trying to keep Israel pure. And this is what Saul did and it grieved the heart of the Lord. And on top of it, he decided to lie. He decided to lie. And Saul and Samuel now told him this. He said, Saul, this is he, Saul still continuing to exonerate himself. But the people took of the spoiled sheep and oxen the chief of the things which should have been notably destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. You remember how he said thy God? He didn't even say my God because he knew he was doing the wrong thing. And Samuel said, And the Lord has great delight in burnt offering. I'm reading verse 22. 
Has the Lord had great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. To obey the Lord, to walk in, in truth, to do the right thing is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. To obey is better than sacrifice. And he continued that as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken that the fat of rams. God would have preferred you, this is so, so much only so, God would have preferred you to obey him than all these sacrifices and all these fat and rams and sheep that you want to sacrifice to him. Is your obedience is enough sacrifice for God. Hallelujah. And then it goes on to say, For rebellion is, is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. So, because Saul rejected the word of the Lord, the instructions of the Lord, the direct directive order from God, God also rejected Saul from being king of Israel from that day on. And if we, we all know the story, how God now chose David to be the one to take over Saul. And how, Saul be, how David became the next king <clears throat> of Israel. That is one of the examples of uh, uh, someone in the Bible that has chosen the way of lies rather than the truth. Look at what the lies he did here. Disobedience. You see, it's better to, because when you disobey, you fall into lie. When you do negativity, you are bound to follow it with lies. If you have a pure heart and a good heart towards your God, you will you rather you will rather stay and walk in truth of God and walk in the truth of God and obey God so that you won't have to lie anyone that you see walking in disobedience is also prone to tell lies and once you tell lies you dig a, dig a, a grave for yourself lies digs a grave but truth keeps you standing forever because truth is alive and truth can never die. Hallelujah. We are talking about the truth. The truth of God. Hallelujah. And the lies, disobedience of Saul, and the lies he told here, made him to forfeit the crown, the throne of Israel. It made him to lose that throne to David. Let us quickly look at another person <clears throat> that chose to, tell, to go for lies. Let us run quickly to the book of second second kings second kings very quickly second kings we're going to talk about the story of gehazi the story of elisha and his servant gehazi this story we all know about it that at that time the world knew about a great prophet elisha remember that elijah was a servant to elijah and when Elijah was going, Elijah had a double mantle from Elijah. So Elijah was a great prophet in Israel. And everyone knew about him. Even up unto Syria, Samaria. And so what happened in this instance, there was a great, a great, great warrior that fell sick in the land of Syria. And he heard about and a little child, a little girl, that tends to the, to the wife of this man that was sick. Actually, the man was infested with leprosy. And the little girl that tended to his wife told the wife about a man in Israel that is one, an all-powerful God is with him and God can use him to heal our master. And the wife told her husband. And the husband said, okay, let me go and see this man. So that he may heal me. And this master rose and traveled all the way to Israel. Let us go, let us read this in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5. 2 Kings, chapter 5. The name of this man is Naaman. And the Bible says in verse 1 that now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master. 
and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captives out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. You see, this maid was part of the captives of Syria from Israel, and she was standing to Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. So that made Naaman to travel all the way to see Elisha. If we jump very quickly to so verses 9, we're going to read there that says, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a message down to him saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times. And thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Elisha did not come out to even see Naaman. Naaman felt slighted because he felt he was a great warrior, known warrior. God had used him to, you know, make conquest of all many nations. And he felt slighted that he couldn't even come out to see me. But what Eli Elisha did was just send a word to him at the gate that he should go and wash seven times at the pool. So when he sent out to go and wash in Jordan seven times, Naaman eventually was persuaded to go and he went. And then the verse 14 says, He went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. When he obeyed the man of God, when he obeyed his prophet, when he obeyed this prophet, he got his healing. Obeying your prophet is very important, especially in these end times. I'm not talking about fake prophets. I'm not talking about prophets with lying tongues. I'm not talking about prophets that only want to fill their stomach instead of fill the kingdom of God with souls. They are more interested in filling their bank accounts than filling the, than, than filling the kingdom of God with souls. They are more interested in lying tongues than saving people from the clutches of devil. Than, 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 than depopulating hell and filling the kingdom of God with souls. They are not interested in that. I'm not talking about those ones. I'm talking about true prophets. When you hack it to your prophets, your ways shall be made well. Your journey shall be smoother when you hack in onto the advice of your prophet. Because they are the eyes of God. Hallelujah. When we tell you this is what God is saying, especially the true ones, please listen and heed. So when he did that, he got his reward. He got his total healing. Hallelujah. He almost did it, but he did. And Naaman came back to bless Saul, to bless um, Elisha for attaining that healing. But Elisha refused his, his uh, thank, thank you gifts. He said, he said, I'm going to read that part. And he returned to the man of God, I'm reading verse 15, he and all his company <clears throat> and came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. But Elijah said, As the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. And in verse 19 he says, And he said unto him, Go in peace. So Naaman departed in peace, well and healed. But what happened? If we quickly go to verse 21, we see here that Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, followed um, Naaman. And he waylaid him on the way. And he requested for the gifts. He said his master told him to bring the gifts. He lied. The lying tongue. The lies. The destruction of lie. Of a lying tongue. That is what this topic is all about. The destruction of the lying tongue. So, he told Laman 
that his master told him to collect the talent of silver, the two changes of garments, the goodies that you have for the prophet. <clears throat> and Naaman told him, take it all. And then he took it. And then he went back home with them. Verse 25 said, But he went in and stood before his master, Elijah. And Elijah said unto him, Where did you come down, Gehazi? And he said, I servant went no way. He, he lied again. He said he didn't go anywhere. But he forgot that he was lying to the servant of God. He said he didn't go anywhere. And what did Elijah say unto him? He said, and he said unto him, this is Elijah talking to, to Gehazi, his servant, the lying servant, the one that went to take the gift that he rejected and said he wasn't going to take. He said, <clears throat> went not my heart with thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vine yards and sheep and oxen and men servant and maid servant? And then he said unto him, Because you have done this, Gehazi, the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. What good will it befall? What good will it do you <clears throat> to lie when you can tell the truth? What good will it do you? What good will you get? Will you gain from deceit, from being stubborn, <clears throat> from disobedience? Anyone that walks in disobedience will walk in lies, and the lies is a is a is a is a is, is a hole. A, a whole dog already ready for you to fall in at any time to be buried. The lie is a ticking bomb because the truth will always come out and prevail. This is a servant of God that he thought he could lie on, but they saw through him. Elijah saw through Gehazi and the, 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 the leprosy that he healed Naaman from came on him, on Gehazi. And he said, it's not only you, him, but his generation forever. Can you imagine such, such punishment for lies, for rejecting the word of God, for rejecting destruction of, the, of his master, of, for, for, for walking contrary to the will of his master, of God, for being stubborn? It is so expensive to live in lies, to proclaim lies. It can lead to death. Hallelujah. Let us look at the final example. We are going to talk, quickly look about the story. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> of Ananias and Sapphira. The story of Ananias and Sapphira. Please, if you have your Bible, please turn quickly with me. To the book of Acts of Apostles. We are going quickly to the book of Acts of Apostles. Amen. And we are going to be reading from chapter 4. Acts of Apostles chapter 4. And we are going to start reading from verse 34 and 35. Acts of Apostles chapter 4 verse 34 and 35. He says, this is the time after Jesus Christ has left. And he has sent the Holy Spirit to dwell with them, with the apostles that he left. And they began the work of God. They gathered themselves together to propagate the kingdom, to preach the, the, the work of God. And they began to mingle in love. And they decided to help one another. Verse 34 and 35 of chapter 4 of Acts of Apostles says, Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prizes of the things that were sold. Nobody lacked. There was love and unity amongst the disciples, amongst the apostles, and amongst the followers of Christ. Nobody lacked. The ones that were rich sold their land and brought the deeds. 
so that there can be abundance and enough for everybody. Verse 35 says, I laid them down at the apostles' feet. They put it and laid them at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. That was what they were doing then. The apostles and the disciples. And as they continue to preach the word of God, they continue to feed the poor, they continue to assist the widow, they continue to, to, to help the orphans, they continue to be of good works. Hallelujah. But in chapter 5 of Acts of Apostles, it's recorded that a certain man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being private to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So this is Ananias and Sapphira, his wife. And they both decided between themselves to sell their land and bring part of it, not all, part of it, and laid it at the apostles' feet as their own contribution to the good works they were doing there. But Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled their heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep part, back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Most times when we lie, we are not lying unto men, we are lying unto God. Most times when we go against the will of God, when we disobey instruction of even our elders, our mothers, our rulers, we are not only disobeying them, we are disobeying God. Most times when we go against instructions, we are going against the will of God. So, this is Peter telling Ananias. He said, is it not your land? Is it not your own? Is anybody fighting with it, for, with you? When you sold it, is it not with you? The whole money, everything with you? Why are you coming to say that this is the whole money that you used to sell the land? You see, the lesson I want us to get here is that Ananias could have said that we sold the land. Maybe we, maybe they sold it for 1000 and they brought 500 so he could have said, truthfully, we sold this land for 1000 but we, we, are, we are willing to bring 500 out of the 1000 as our own contribution. That would have been so perfect. Nobody would have fought them. Because people were bringing it willingly. It wasn't by force. It is what they could afford. It is what they could bring. You didn't have to show to, <clears throat> to, to want to prove some points. Who is the proving, proving point to? That he sold everything and bought all the money. Why? What is there to gain in telling that lie? But you see what happened to him. He said, And Ananias hearing these words fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. He fell right there and died just because he told a lie. I told you that lies ends people in hell. It's in death. Because lies is death. But truth is alive and is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. And after he died, and the young men arose, wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after then, his wife, not knowing what has happened, she didn't know that the, the husband had died. She too came in and Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yeah, we did for so much. She, uh, she, she testified to the lies her husband told. Remember that they planned it among themselves. She said, yes, that's the truth. That's the amount we sold, it, we sold the land for. And what happened to her? Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold the feet of them which have buried thy husband at the door, and shall carry thee out, and bury you also. Then fell she down straight away at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things.
we may ponder in our heart. Why death? Why? Why did they? Why? Why did they have to? I mean, why? Why death? Why do they have to be punished by death? Why does the punishment of their line have to be dead? Is it that grief? But I tell you that there is no bigger sin between any sin. A sin is a sin. A sin of lying is as great as a sin of uh, uh, adultery. A sin of lying is as, as great a sin as a, a sin of killing. There is no greater sin. A sin is a sin. And lies is a sin. Satan is the father of all lies. And we know what Satan represented in the kingdom of God. What Satan did. So we are not supposed to follow Satan. Because Satan is the father of all lies. So when you lie, you are proclaiming Satan as your father. But when you stick to the truth, you are proclaiming Christ as your Lord and Savior. It is very wrong. It's a sin to tell a lie. It's better to stick to the truth. Yes, it's possible to distort the truth and misinterpret the truth like all these three did like he said in the book of Luke 11 52 he said woe unto you lawyers because you have taken away the key to knowledge scriptural truth you yourself do not enter and you held back those who were entering by your flawed interpretation of God's word and your man-made tradition these are talking to the, the Pharisees, how they live in lies, how they present themselves outwardly as holy, but inside they are as dark as vipers. That was when, when they wanted to throw, to condemn the woman they caught in adultery, God Christ told them, he who had no sin, to throw the first stone at her. Because they live in lies. Their lives is filled with lies. They are seen as a liar is not greater than the sin, it's not smaller than the sin of the woman caught in adultery. A sin is a sin. And it says, it is expedient that you maintain the truth. If you, you see this in the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 8. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness, upright in right standing with God. There is nothing contrary to truth or perverted, crooked in, in them. That should be your word. You should always stand for the truth. Do not be afraid of the repercussion of saying the truth. Because the repercussion of telling a lie is worse than the repercussion of saying the truth. Assuming that Ananias and Sapphira said, said the truth, that we, we sold this land for a thousand but we kept five hundred for ourselves, they will not die, they are saying the truth. The only thing is that they, 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 maybe Paul would have wanted them to bring everything, but he can't, it's what they have. So it's not even mandating them to do that. They just wanted to shine. Self-gratification. Self-actualization. Self-validation. Which ends them in death. It ended them in death. The Bible says that you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. But I always say this. According to the book of John 8 verse 32. That it's not only the truth that you know that set you free. It is the truth that you know and you do. Because a lot of people know the truth, but they are not doing the truth. A lot of people know the truth, they are not saying the truth. A lot of people know the truth, but they are not living the truth. Pastors and prophecies and all those wicked pastors, demonic pastors that open churches, they know the truth. They read the Bible. But they are not preaching the truth. They are not living the truth. They are molesting young girls, raping women, using women as sacrifice, killing rams, shedding blood. When Christ was the last blood that was shed for this, for the sin of mankind. They still partake in all these demonic things. They are living a lie. They are living a lie. So are those ones set free? They know the truth. So it is the truth that you know and the truth that you do that sets you free. You must know it and you must do it. Hallelujah. In Jeremiah 5, verse 1 says, The Lord says, Walk the streets of Jerusalem. This is to prove that when you say the truth, you please God. The God can, because of one mind, say, say the truth, save a nation. As I'm reading now in the book of Jeremiah 5, 1, 
The Lord says, walk the streets of Jerusalem. Look around and think about these things. Search the public squares of the city. See if you can find one good person. One who does, not, who does honest thing. And who searches for the truth. If you find one good person, I will forgive Jerusalem. This is what God was saying to Jeremiah. At the time he was calling Jeremiah to go and reboot back the city of Jerusalem. Is there anyone, anyone that is truthful? I will because of that truthful person save Jerusalem. Can you find one? It's so difficult to find one. The book of Psalm 17 verse 2. It says, oh praise the Lord. All ye nation. Praise him. All ye people. For his merciful king kindness is great towards us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. No matter how much you live a life of lie, the truth, the truth of the Lord, the truth of the Lord endureth forever. The truth never dies. The truth has a heartbeat. The truth lives forever. The truth is Jesus Christ. Let this be your word, your watchword every day. According to the book of Psalm 119, 30, he said, I have chosen the way of the truth and faithfulness. Your ordinances have I set before me. Have you chosen the way of the truth and the ordinances of the Lord? Have you chosen the way of the truth and his faithfulness? Have you set the ordinances, the instructions, the laws of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord? Have you set them before you? Are you walking in the commandments of God? Are you abiding in the commandments and laws of the Lord? Are you walking in his precepts? Are you following his don'ts and do's? Are you living in truth? Check yourself today. Do a, a search on yourself. Like people go to the doctors to do a checkup, a yearly checkup of their health. Do a spiritual checkup of yourself today. Are you living in truth? Are you living with your somebody that is called your wife? Or is that person somebody else's wife? Are you using that woman just for, for, for your sexual uh, gain and, and destroying that woman's life? Lie to her that you will marry her. But in your heart, you know that you will not marry her. What life are you living? Check yourself. Are you speaking the truth at your place of work? At all the responsibilities that they place in your heart, are you uh, uh, reporting giving report on them a, a true report on them are you presenting the true adequate up, uh, 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 correct re accurate report on all those things that were placed in your hands are you are you are you trading with the talents god has given you and yielding truthful fruits or are you using your talent in a perversion pervasive way to deceive mankind are you a, a, a positive person in the community, in the society? Or are you a negative person living the life of lies? Are you somebody someone can rely on? Or someone that is deceitful, aversive, cunning, full of envy, malicious? What kind of life are you living? Check yourself. Do a spiritual check on your life and decide today to change your ways. The way of the truth is the way to go. Because Jesus Christ is the, is the truth. You should be able to say concerning your life that when you stand before kings, you will tell them the truth and will never be ashamed. Never be ashamed of the truth because there's nothing to be ashamed about the truth. The truth stands and the truth endures forever. The truth does not bring shame. Rather, it brings glory. It brings favor. It brings expansion, increase, multiplication. The truth makes a way for you. The truth opens doors of breakthrough unto you. When you maintain the truth, you'll be able to stand before kings with the truth. You'll be able to stand before rulers with the truth. You'll be able to shine forth with the truth. When you live in lies, you are killing your star. Your star can never shine. You are dimming it. But when you speak the truth, your star will shine.
your glory will show. You become the salt of the world. There is sweetness in you. Blessings will gravitate towards you. Helpers of destinies will locate you. When you stand with the truth. When you speak the truth. And therefore to always speak the truth. To always stand for the truth. All the days of your life. And as you do this. The Lord will bless your ways. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. And I pray for us all. That the Lord will equip us. To live a life of truth. To not be afraid to stand for the truth. Because Christ is as bold as a lion. And he said, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And because he's in us, there is hope of glory. Because the truth is in us, we are able to stand before men of valor. We are able to stand tall and shine forth. We are able to be the first, even amongst our equal because of the truth. The Lord will equip us, energize us, enable us to stand for the truth and walk in truth. Let us be the truth in where we live, in our communities. Let us be the truth at our place of work. Let us be the truth at where we go. Let us extend the hand of truth to people. Let people know that we are men and women of virtue. That we are men and women of truth. A fear, justifiable human being. People that they can rely upon. People that they can look up to. People that live the life of Christ. That follow Christ. That emulate Christ. In the name of Jesus. Today I pray that those that are struggling to reject truth and despise away with lies. Lives of lies. The Lord will equip you today. Empower and receive the power right now. To live above lies. And begin to live a life of truth in Jesus name. What manner of life you're living if it is not a truth? Today, the Lord is equipping you, energizing you, empowering you to step out of that life. A life of failure, of deceit. A life of lies, of, 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 of adultery, fornication. A lies of uh, 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 usurping people's uh, blessings to you, of stealing. A lies of sleeping around, destroying homes. The Lord will equip you today to step out of that life and live a life of truth in the name of Jesus. Today is your turning point. The, the grace of God is available right now. Receive it. And to, from today on, you begin to live a life of truth and you will change your generation for good. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you all for joining me. I thank you all. I appreciate you all. Please share, share, share to other platforms. Um, I just I want people to 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 be aware of these messages because it is the it is from the throne of grace about the truth that Jesus Christ is the truth. I pray that you go and come back with testimonies next week in Jesus' name. As you go this week, from tomorrow, you are stepping into your atmosphere of miracles. In the name of Jesus. The host of heaven will go before they and make every crooked path to be straight for you. Whatever you lay your hands upon will prosper. This is the week that that door you have been knocking on for years will open unto you in Jesus' name. This is the week where the God will make anyone sitting on your file to remember you. Like God made the king to remember the file of Mordecai. And he remembered Mordecai for good. So this week you will be remembered for good. Every good thing that you have done, the Lord is remembering you this week for a gain, a blessings for it. And much more than you can take will the Lord bless you this week. In the name of Jesus, this week you will be favored. I cover every one of us in the blood of Jesus. I sanctify our ways, our vehicles, our homes with the blood. I pray that the blood will continue to avenge for you and your home and your family. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will speak great and beautiful things for you. It will speak blessings for you in Jesus' name. And so shall it be. Go and come back with
testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, hallelujah. Thank you all for watching. Remain blessed. Till we see next week. Amen. <laughs>